Go ahead. My name is David Ducker. I assist him with monitoring, and I'd like to welcome. It's not working. We got to turn it on. All right. Move the chairs back. Okay. Um, David, give me the mic. Give me the mic. Test. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Hello everyone, my name is David Zucker, and I assist him with moderating here at the council complex. All right, we have several simple rules here. First of all, one fool at a time. Second, no personal attacks. All right. Um, there will be a we have several policies here. There will be a charge of three dollars that will be connect, collected from each of you to defray the college expenses. And second, this restaurant is not in business for its health. And so if we want to meet here, that means the food and or drink purchase will be required of you at a restaurant. You might as well get yourself some dinner or something else to eat or drink. All right. Announcements and yes. Now our program What's the format. Do we have a format? I'm going to do a program format is as follows. First, there will be announcements. Charlie will announce whatever the pro uh, have announcements concerning upcoming programs, and anyone else may make announcements that are of community interest. Then, second, then the, okay, go ahead. Then the speaker will talk for about an hour or so on the tonight's topic. Then there will be questions and answers. This is like Jeopardy. The questions must be in that form. You have speeches, save them for the next segment, which is the rebuttals, at which point Tim will portion out the time each person, each person gets to speak, and you can either rebut the speaker and talk about whatever other damn thing you want to for, 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 the, for the time that Tim gives you. Then the speaker will get the last word. We're out at 8.45. And we, have, and we have to be out here by about 7.45 because so the restaurant closes later. All right. All right, Charlie, go ahead. Everybody, what announcements you have concerning upcoming programs? Okay, you want to get the screen, Tim? We're getting it right now, Charlie. It's taking a second to pull up. You kindly remind the people in attendance at the restaurant that we can hear them quite well. And uh, so please uh, maintain some decorum at the restaurant. Thank you. Well, yeah, Charlie, that also applies to you, too. They're not listening. Well, good. All right, it's coming, Charlie. I'm getting the shared screen up in just a second, please. Okay. Give me a second here. And uh, okay, hang on. Okay, Charlie, it should be, should be up now. You've got the screen up. Go ahead. All right, welcome everyone to meeting number 3,696 of the College Complexes, the playground for people who think. Now, first of all, I'd like everyone to please mute with a big red X of your microphone. And if you're in the restaurant, why don't you please be quiet just for a little while, okay? You get a chance at during the rebuttal period. Uh, to yap all you want. Okay, first of all, uh, I'd like to mention, as I have several times, that we maintain a Google email group and a meetup email group. They both function in similar fashion, and you'll get one or two notices of upcoming programs. And I highly recommend subscribing to either one or both of those. It only takes a few seconds. And um, you're, there's instructions there if you click on the central top uh, of the site. Um, let's see. Although I'm not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for our upcoming programs. On December the 17th, 
our own Tim Bolger, <sighs> will be talking about working conditions in the toy shop. Apparently there's some personnel issues, which Santa Claus is going to resolve through the personage of Tim Bolger. So there's been a group grievance filed by the workforce. So we'll see if in fact, we will have Christmas this year. Anyhow, on December 17th, don't toy with Santa. <laughs> okay, December the 24th and 31st, uh, we will be taking, we will be on holiday. So there will be no meetings of the college complexes. In the meantime, while you're at home, I highly recommend I put together a list of all the topics we discussed during the during the year, which you can look over, and these are all the recordings that are on file in the um, uh, uh, lecture library that Tim maintains. Also, I have another feature, which you may or may not be aware of. If you go down to the center of the, the website, there's a little guy watching a video stream. I've posted any number of videos that are free online. Scroll down a little bit. There, where it says PowerPoint presentations, you can click on that too. Right here? With the screen, the guy with the screen. Right there? I can't tell who you are. There's a guy with a screen. There. Okay, now I've listed all kinds of the PowerPoint slides of speakers and presentations. So you can go back and review those. There are also any number of free relevant films and films of general interest, topical interest, which you might want to look at. And there's a link to each thing by the title. It indicates the length and so forth. So you might want to check that out during the interim period while we are on holiday, uh, continuing ongoing education. We will reopen on January the 7th. On this date, we usually have uh, a year in review. We scheduled John Bechtel to talk about the midterm elections, which is still in the news. We may have another speaker on the amendment that was passed in Illinois regarding labor laws. We also look, we often discuss our predictions for the coming year. What is your prediction? You might start working on yours. What do you predict is going to happen? Uh, okay, that's on January 7th. So we open the year. Uh, we'll give everybody a shot at uh, talking that night. On January the 14th, Jan Lee will be returning with another very, very, she spent a lot of time on this. A, um, we anticipate a detailed presentation regarding our perceptions of China. So it's our understanding and views and opinions uh, regarding uh, the nation and culture of China. So that's on January the 14th. On January um, uh, 21st and 28th, we'll be open. We're still scheduling speakers, which brings us into February 4th. And Nancy Spanis, an author, uh, and maintains a blog spot. She spoke on Alexander Hamilton. We'll be talking about this in conjunction with President's Day, but during February, but she was talking about what every American should know about Abraham Lincoln, what we should all know about honest Abe. Was he all that honest? I don't know. Okay, so you got the, the lay down there, check out the lecture library and that PowerPoint collection. I'll be adding uh, uh, matters to that as on an ongoing basis. So you might wanna check back on that from time to time. Okay, Tim, take it away. Any more announcements? Andy, you got an announcement? 
You want to announce? Go ahead. Just uh, stand up there, and I'll get you right in the picture. Stand in the mic. Right here. Right there, Andy. That's just fine. Just use the microphone. I have an announcement. I have an announcement uh, that the burden is the eighth program, Illinois Solar for All. Uh, Louder, Andy. In the last two weeks, uh, I've seen several reports. Elon Musk is uh, installing a big project. It's called SWAT. It's a nickname for investors. It's solar, wind, and batteries. And they're, uh, they're displacing utility size installations around the world. So, uh, Walt Bay, Warren Buffett, and others are beginning to invest in the copper mines and other things that will be driving the conversion of solar, wind, and batteries all over the world. So, we'll have more information on that next week. For anybody that has any questions, feel free to call me. I just got to introduce our speakers. Go ahead, David. All right. Tonight's topic. This is Illinois Solo for All, and I'm just pleased to introduce to you Will Gomez, Miriam, who we're going to talk about. Give it up for them both. Okay, go ahead. Hand on the mic, and uh, whenever you're ready, we'll go. Hello, ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas to everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome back. How do, how do people feel coming back instead of doing this virtual stuff? You might tell don't like it, it's personal stuff, and it just feels, it just feels like, it doesn't feel right, but it is what it is, so, but you guys are, yeah, happy to be here, talking to you guys, this is, um, like, Harry, Muriel, uh, oh, by the way, I'm with Carol, which is the CRO, it's Hilton Environmental Rights Reform Organization, there in Hilton, there's so much going on all the time regarding environmental concerns, and um, it's never a dumb moment. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Miriam Perez, and I am also a grassroots educator like Rose, um, but I work at a Rogers Park at a Just Harvest. Um, the mission for Just Harvest is to end poverty and reduce hunger by providing nutritious, healthy meals every day. and through all this cultural education and organizing with it. And I am here to present to you our presentation on Illinois Solar for All and how can- Excuse me, could you speak into the microphone? I'm having a hard time hearing you. Okay. Yes, and I'm here to present on Illinois Solar for All and how can consumers begin to do this better. Okay, your PowerPoint's up and it's online. So go ahead. So here is our first can you please go to the next slide? Here is our agenda. So we will, I will go over Illinois Solar for All, a little bit of Solar 101, Illinois Solar for All programs, eligibility, and the benefits, and also provide the platform to ask questions and, and talk about solar energy. Can you guys still see the PowerPoint? Yeah. Go ahead. You need to make a slideshow. I did. I thought I did. Sorry about that. Okay, hang on. Got to get this damn thing up. Okay, just give me a Next. Okay, uh, just. All right, well, we'll. Just... Okay, hang on. Let me... Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah. So again, the agenda. And can you go to the next slide, Tim, please? Okay. So what is Illinois Solar for All? So Illinois Solar for All is a state program that brings the benefits of solar energy to income eligible households, nonprofit organizations, and public facilities, Jeez. while also providing funding to job training programs. Eligible participants can receive affordable solar installations and save money on electric bills. Okay, can you see that? Or you might can you move in closer if you need to. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Go ahead and sit down. We can, we can get you. Yes, yeah, you go on to the next page, please. Okay, 
So what will Illinois Solar Fall accomplish? It is people. Um, I can't really see. Can you move that little the the box there? The video box. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Okay, thank you. So Illinois Solar Fall increases availability to solar energy projects in income eligible and environmental justice communities in Illinois. It creates measurable cost savings for participants and it creates jobs in underdeserved communities through job training programs and hiring requirements. So part of the agenda so is solar 101, so a little bit about energy, solar energy. So what is solar energy? It is electromagnetic energy <coughs> transmitted from the sun to solar panels. The solar panels capture that sunlight and convert it to energy. And how is energy measured? Watts measures electricity, and there are a thousand watts in kilowatts. The capacity size of a solar system is typically measured in kilowatts. So kilowatt hours measure energy being used or produced. And what are the environmental benefits of solar? It reduces carbon dioxide and other pollutants in the atmosphere, which means less pollution, cleaner air, and water. And how does a solar PV system work? So direct current, direct current, which is electricity that is being collected from the solar panels, is being sent to an inverter that turns that transforms that DC electricity to AC, which is alternating current that is being used in your electrical panels that goes into your house, your home, and lights up your, your refrigerator, your light bulbs, and that's how the PV system works, which is the solar system. And what and what some of you may ask is what happens to the leftover electricity from your system? So because of the sunlight that's constantly you know on our roof or just producing energy for us. What happens to that leftover? The leftover gets sent back to the grid and it stays there. There there's an, it rolls over. So every time that you're that you're producing energy gets sent, sent back to the grid and then you use it when you need it. And is there enough sunlight for solar in Illinois? So there was a once once where only solar energy was accessible to people who live in California. And Nevada because there's so much sun there, but now they have made it so solar panels are um, can collect energy through UV rays. So that means when there's cloudy days or it's snowy and we have no sun shining, we can still collect energy through UV rays collected through on the solar panel. And do all homes in a community receive the same sunlight? So this is a Google project sunroof where you guys can go on Google and if you are a homeowner, you can put your address and see how much sunlight you use a year and how much saving you would save if you would like to put solar on site. And now here are the programs for Illinois Solar for All. So the residents can participate through the four sub-programs for Illinois Solar for All. The first one is for renters. The second one is for homeowners and building owners. The third one is for nonprofits and public facilities. And the fourth is job training. So homeowners and building owners. So eligible homeowners can install a residential solar project. The solar project is installed on their home roof or yard and offsets their energy use and they see savings on their electric costs. And eligible homeowners can also subscribe to a community solar project. A project is installed at a site served by the electric electrical utility, and the subscriber receive credits on their electric bill. And renters, so eligible renters who receive an electricity bill can subscribe to a community solar project. A solar project is installed at a site served by their electrical utility and the subscriber receives credits on their electric bill. Eligible, eligible renters can also talk to their landlord about installing a residential solar system. A solar project is installed on their property and offsets the property's energy use and the tenants are required to see those savings. And nonprofits and public facilities. So eligible organizations can stop. Can this was my favorite. It's really good. So we brought that back here and we thought we'd adapt it. And on their property. 
eligible let me read that again. So eligible organizations can install a solar project on their property. So the solar installation offsets their energy use and the organization sees savings on their electric costs. Eligible organizations can also be the anchor tenant of a community solar project. So a solar project is installed at a site served by the electrical utility. The organization subscribes to a large share of that installation and the organization receives credits on their electric bill. And how does adoption fit into Illinois Solar for All? Um, approved, so they fit into it through approved solar companies are required to hire job trainees to work on a percentage of their project. Approved solar companies is the list that Illinois Solar for All provides of solar companies that have gone through the process. And job trainees must come from qualified training programs. And now the eligibility. So income eligible renters and house owners, you are eligible to participate in solar programs or meet the income the income requirements below. So if you are in Chicago, so if you are one household, just you know, just look at this list and think of your household. Are you one, two, three, four, five? Do you make below or above that? If you make below or at, if you make at, for example, if you make um, 63,200, if you make that amount or below, you are automatically eligible for this program. And let's go into homeowners and how they are, and how they are also eligible. So single family residential properties occupied by households with an income of 80% or less of the AMR. Multi-family residential, which is two to four unit properties, at least two of those units need to be occupied by households with incomes of 80% or less to qualify. And then multi-family residential, which is five units or larger properties, at least half of the units occupied by households must be must have incomes of 80% or less of the AMI. What what does AMI mean? Um, average medium income, which is the eligibility chart that we saw. So that AMI, if we go back to the eligibility chart, that would be the AMI. And community solar. So households with an income that is 80% or less of the American medium income, and they must pay their own electric bill. And nonprofits and public facilities, anchor subscribers, and single nonprofit or public facility can serve as an as anchor subscriber and receive the same. As income eligible households. Sorry about this. No, go ahead. Just takes a second. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, uh, Go ahead. Slide show. I know, Charlie, shut up. Go ahead. Um, you go ahead. No, no, okay. Okay, so now how nonprofits have public facilities. So property is occupied by a nonprofit organization or is owned and occupied by a public facility. Property is located within a qualified environmental justice community or income eligible community or the nonprofit or public facility must be a critical service provider such as a community center child care facility or hospital also a nonprofit or public facility must be able to determine community needs so these are all that would qualify or that would make nonprofits and public facilities eligible to participate in the program It's, I'm having some trouble with it. Okay, there we go. Okay, and uh, who can participate in qualified job training programs? So training is available for individuals and small businesses. Um, and individuals are you know, foster care alumni, returning citizens, and residents of EJC, which is environmental justice and income eligible community and church participants. To locate a job training program, log on to Illinois Solar for All. That's how we use the list. Uh, programs that are in your area. And the benefits to 
Illinois Solar Farm. So one of one of the well, the greatest benefits I would say in this program um, that I feel values the most the consumer is the approved vent the solar the approved solar company list so the AV the approved vendor list. So this list must be met with rigorous requirements requiring quality workmanship, financial protection, cost and savings requirements, marketing requirements, and all this needs to be in disclosure forms before even um, going into inspecting your home inspection or signing you up to receive credit. So these disclosure forms make sure that the consumer is protected from scams and fraud and that the value is restored into the into the customer by this approved vendor list. And how do the savings work? So the electricity from the solar panel system installed on your home offsets on your home or either in community solar, community solar offsets the electricity you use from your electricity provider. Your bill will be reduced by avoided usage and or net metering bill credit. And what are the environmental benefits of solar energy? Um, I, I'm saying this again because we have used um, dangerous ways to create, to foster our energy. And now that solar energy, we can we can produce energy in a sustainable way. And this sustainable way really does reduce the amount of carbon dioxide and other pollutants that into the atmosphere. And less pollution results in cleaner air and cleaner water for us and the family. And now I will go ahead and pass it over to my friend Rose that she will talk a little bit about community solar. Hey guys, the next section is about community solar. And um, this is something that Renters don't have to be a homeowner. Renters can participate in solar. Solar will benefit the renters because they can participate, like I said, and their bill would get credits so that that would be offsetting their costs on their bill. So their bill is going to be reduced because they're getting credits on your bill for the amount of um, energy that was not used in the, in, in the, on the grid, in the, in the grid that you're subscribed to. Okay, uh, a subscriber, that would be you, the renter. A subscriber is a customer who owns or leases a portion of community solar installation. Okay, the subscribers may receive credit on their electric bill for the energy that their portion of the solar installation produces. Okay, what is a community solar a project? Okay, so um, solar panels are installed in an area that is somewhere uh, that the utility company owns. Okay, it's part of their territory that they own. And anyone with an electric bill can participate. Um, like I said, it could be uh, a renter who pays the bill. You don't have to ask your landlord to participate within um, community solar. You don't have to ask anybody. They're the one that pays the bill, so you can be a subscriber. Um, and like I said, each subscriber is credited with the electricity created by their share of the solar project right on. I, I, hang on, let me get that noise. Go ahead. Okay, right on their uh, electric bill. Okay, who can subscribe to community solar through Illinois Solar for All? Anyone income eligible who lives in the same electric utility territory as the community solar installation. That's uh, renters, homeowners, and building owners all can subscribe. Okay, so you would be speaking with your um, approved solar company to learn more about eligibility. And that includes Tom Ed. That's who you can speak to is Tom Ed for being a, a subscriber to community solar. That's just 
one company. This is kind of all right. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. So, um, like I said, um, to be part of Community Solar, currently it's ComEd, and there's another company that just has gotten into the game, and that company's name is Solstice. S O L S T I C E. Solstice, right? And they are going to be building a community farm uh, in spring of 2023. But right now they're taking subscribers and I have the information, which is their website, to be able to subscribe and be able to get solar energy. Um, that, like I said, this is something that's new, that's not come at, it's a different uh, solar, it's a different solar company. And like I said, they are going to be building their um, community farm spring of 2023. But right now, they are getting subscribers. So it's good to uh, get on board right now. And I'm going to pass these out so that you can learn about community solar. Okay. So you're, you're pretty much done with your presentation now? Well, now it's not just so now I was just kind of talking about like the questions, if you have any questions or any comments, or if you would like to add anything to this topic okay. about solar energy. All right. Well, well, but well that's, that's it for the presentation. Okay. Dave, you want to, okay. Pass it to Dave? Yeah, pass it to Dave. He'll uh, moderate our question period. Okay, yes. All right. right. Questions and answers. And remember, they have to be in that form. Okay. You're going to have to hand the mic back to our question. This is, this is like Jeopardy. Okay, so who's got the first? Who's got the first question? Who's got the first question? Who's got the first question? Okay. All right. I'd like to find out how long is this solar? How long has this? Okay. How long has this solar installation program been in place? And uh, how long have you two been involved with this solar uh, project? And are you seeing success with it? That's, that's a really good question. Thank you so much for asking that. And so, oh, just, like, it, just, leave, just okay. leave that off the bottom. Just, yeah, just, 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 if you, just leave it off the bottom. <laughs> if you can see the battery, it's just not going anywhere. Okay, so I, 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 this program started in 2017. So when CJ was passed, this was a result to that. And we I just kind of supplied for this grant in 20. I will, I, this is my second year. So, so, like 2020, I believe I started this. Yeah, no, 2021. Wow, well, no, 2020, it's been like three years. Yeah, so this yeah. Is, is my second year as a graduate <laughs> educator. And, um, well, the work is definitely, it's definitely, it's, so the work is definitely needed because there has been a history of people abusing or scams abusing of consumers, you know, people getting into scams, getting robbed, getting just it's been it's been a very it's it's very difficult to gain the trust of the community that make that you know that tells them that this is a program that really invests and values the consumer and makes sure that they that they are protected. And that's just something that isn't has not been common. Like I said. The scams have been very abusive and people have lost money. And you know, when I go into a community and do outreach, it's very difficult at first. But if you want but to yeah. sit down, go ahead. I can I can still see on the camera. No, that is good. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over. That has been okay. my, my okay, experience. Rosa, you want to comment next, please? Sure, sure. What was the question? Uh what just I was asking about the, the amount of success you've had with the program and a little bit about your background and why you joined it. Okay, yeah, it has been challenging. Um, I just got on a couple of months ago, and I'm learning more and more regarding solar energy. So, and I would say um, what's most challenging is um, getting renters to participate because a lot of times renters think that oh they can participate, participate, but through this solstice um, community farm that gives more people opportunities to be able to subscribe. 
because ComEd right now um, trying to get on as a subscriber, there's a waiting list. So you wouldn't be able to get solar energy off, off the back you know, because of their waiting list. It's going to might be, I don't know how long it will be, but it gives you a new opportunity to solve this to, um, to get on board. Um, and also, um, my understanding is once you apply uh, for assaulted, you get a gift card, a hundred dollar gift card. If that's an incentive uh, for people, um, that, that would be a, a benefit too. Okay. Just, uh, FYI. All right, Charlie, you got the next question. Yes. Um, can I set up my own community solar project? and start the Bridgeport Electric Company and sell electricity to my neighbors? Well, thank you so much for that question. That's a very common question. So there a lot of people who are homeowners have brought up that question. And currently I know the program only um, has that for nonprofits and public facilities. As far as um, homeowners, there's nothing, there's nothing regarding regarding that, but that's definitely something that <clears throat> that you know with the funding of CETA can make that possible. But at the moment there there's not there's through this program that that is not that is not possible. Only through nonprofits. Okay. So hopefully with CETA that can be possible too. Who's got the next question? Next question. We got an opening here. Um go ahead. Right. If you're a renter, if you want to put up these solar panels, are you going to have to get the permission of the landlord? And can the landlord say no? Okay. Thanks for passing around the mic, everybody. Okay. Alex. Okay. Yeah, the, the um, homeowner has to make that decision. If you can convince the homeowner that it's for the benefit of the uh, environment, First and foremost, I believe um, that's what's going to benefit everybody is uh, reducing carbon emissions. That's more important than anything I can think of at this point. Yeah, but the homeowner who owns the property, yes, it, yes. It, 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 it up to him yes. and him alone, yes. whether it, it, your environmental policy or not, it's yes. his property. Yes, it's his property. He would be making that decision, right. Right, you, exactly. He would be the one. You can't exactly. You wouldn't be able to make that decision. Only another. So if you, if you are renting and the homeowner isn't willing to do the, the solar on on site, if you pay your own electricity bill, you can subscribe to community solar. But if your electric bill is included into your rent, then that would have to talk to your homeowner on getting it on site or or having you pay your own electricity. Okay. Any okay. other questions? Who's next? Who's next with questions? Okay. Okay, Charlie, you got another question asked away. Yeah, I understand all these solar installations are made by Chinese and a lot of that stuff According to another guy at the college, all the stuff coming from China is junk. And am I going to have to buy a bunch of junky Chinese stuff that is going to just not work after about a couple of years or so? Yes. Yeah, so How long is this stuff guaranteed? Yeah, so that is a very good question. And through our approved vendor list, Illinois Solar for All is making sure that, you know, the, how you say like this stuff isn't um, isn't something that just goes to waste easily. They make sure that these are durable and that they have an extension life. And that's when you sign the disclosure form. Uh, all this information regarding the solar panels, where they come from, would be um, vetted through the process of approved vendors. And you can go on Illinois Solar for All, and it talks about more of the things that they make sure that these solar companies are are you know required to be on this approved vendor list, and that approved vendor list really does protect the consumer through make through having that vetted process, making sure that these solar companies are ethical in everything, not just not just the savings. My 
my next question to both of you ladies is that uh, uh, did you go through any like do you do this like with at public forums all the time for public speaking and that kind of things? And can you just get into a little bit about the background of how you found this thing out? I'm, I'm interested in uh, why you're why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. I hope we're I hope we're not and if, if it's if you don't want to answer, I understand. No, of course. Yes. Yeah. So um the reason why I got into this is because I I think like two years ago I was desperate for a job and I wanted to make money quick. And I saw Craigslist app on a solar company. And that was now that solar company is it, it was a private company. It doesn't exist anymore. It was called car and you know it's fire to bring out more of your energy. Savings in a special way, or our mission was just to make the sale. And a lot of this information was just, it was misleading, it was misinforming. It, they would want to sell like solar systems with 22 panels for almost like $60,000. And that really isn't, that, that's not how much a solar system costs. And I, I got out of it, and, but I still had this passion of working on educating people. I felt that there was a really strong force in misleading, misinforming, and just abusing consumers through stealing their money. And so I found this program through my university um, at Just Harvest, and they were hiring a grassroots educator. Yeah. And I applied, and I got it. And we need, we have an onboarding training, so it's like a three, two day like, training um, at the beginning of, our, of the grant year. And then we meet monthly, and we check in monthly to update and see well, how our outreach is because we do have to do outreach and that's going out to the community um creating relationships with the community scheduling events to inform people about this program um you know CJ is happening and a lot of people don't know how CJ is being used to effect and it's it's you know it's through these programs you know it's our job to make sure that the community sees the money that CJ has put into investing to our community and our planet and so, uh, yeah, I got um, involved because I believe that um, we need to change from using gas um, and to try to make our planet safer and cleaner. I, I really believe that we're up against the wall. I, I really, I, I see it every day, what's happening. And I think um, solar energy is one of the answers for the future in order for us to continue as human beings on this planet. I, I, I've been um, an environmentalist for a very long time. And um, that's part of the reason why I got involved with um, Illinois Solar for All. And it, it is continuous um, training. We have to do training um, online and we have to check in and a lot of Forms, a lot of outreach, and so it's, it's um, constant. Very challenging, in other words, right? Of course. And yeah. uh, any questions from our uh, audience yet? Still, or do you? Uh, does anybody have a question from the peanut gallery online? Yeah. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, they. I'm not precisely certain if Illinois is suited for collecting solar energy. It was pretty dark today, for example, and they don't seem to collect a lot of energy. Uh, they're not, they haven't quite gotten their technology there yet. And if there's only one company, or there's only one solar farm that I know of in the Chicago area, why aren't like guys setting up companies and setting up their own solar farms all over the place and making money. There's only one company that seemed, and you didn't indicate that they're putting up a big install. Are they putting up a big installation someplace? Yeah, um, there's going to be a new one that's being built in Chicago. Um, and they're going to be one that I had mentioned, um, Celsius. And um, besides ComEd, right now, currently there's only two. And ComEd has a waiting list to um, be able to subscribe. 
to solar energy as a renter. So yes, I, I do believe um, what you're saying. There should be um, no, for me personally, I believe there should be no waiting list to get solar energy as a renter. I really believe that. So I think there needs to be a revolution for this to happen ASAP. I, I, I do think that um, it should be um, something where we have solar energy. We should have had it 20 years ago with, with, without um, any um, of the red tape and so on of what we're facing now and right. so on and so forth. Okay, go ahead. Well, look, they don't seem to collect a lot of electricity. That's why you, all the guys with cars, you have to charge them, don't you? Even if you have solar panels, you got to use regular electricity to recharge it. For for electric cars, you you can I, you can use um solar panels and so I know they have like charging stations. There's an organization in Chicago that's leading that, but I I have no I have not that much information regarding how to charge um, those cars or. Oh, and just yes, of course. Let me just um. So your question regarding the solar panels. So um, I, I've learned that electromagnetic panels are solar panels are being built and being used to also collect UV rays. So UV rays are still happening, are still shining even through clouds or snow. So in days that it's not sunny, these solar panels are still collecting this energy that's being produced. Um, I hope that answers the question. And also, I want to say what Rosa, there needs to be a revolution on community solar because that is the reason why there's not a lot of solar companies building community solar because not everyone doesn't know what that, that they're a renter and they can subscribe. If we have a large amount of lists, if we have renters of a building and we could probably get on site, we just need to organize and and educate people. And so that's Andy awesome. wants to comment. So go ahead, Andy. Yeah, something to answer Charlie's question. Um, solar, the price of solar panels has dropped ninety percent in the last right. ten years or so. So the panels are now so cheap that you can put up twice as many panels to collect the same amount of energy on cloudy days as it used to be uh, cost effective. Um, Charlie, you should write this down and do research on it. There, Elon Musk is driving a new program called SWAB, S-W-A-B, that's, that's a short for solar, wind, and batteries. The batteries are cheap enough now that the utilities are building solar and wind farms with a big battery farm on the same uh, plot of land. And they're, uh, they're completely displacing coal, oil, gas, and nukes. Uh, solar energy now, uh, the solar, wind, and battery farms is considered the cheapest form of energy on the planet. Uh, they just finished a big, uh, I think it's a hundred megawatt installation down in Australia. Uh, they, they, because they were having problems with the lines that hit Britain. So they built this independent standalone installation and other, other countries are also building these big installations. It's not backyard solar anymore, it's utility scale. Mm -hmm. And the utilities are putting in big utility scale battery yeah. banks to cover it at night. So if you met, Solar only shines during the day, but the wind blows intermittently. But if you marry those two to a big battery bank, then you have 24 hour baseline electricity that will put coal, oil, and nuclear to the chain. Okay? There's Tim. Andy, there's only one utility solar bank in Chicago, I believe. Only one. On the south side. Is starting, Charlie. Now, there may be only one here, but there's hundreds of others around the world and they're spreading. Yeah, well, that's around the world. Well, that's why these two ladies are here tonight trying to inform us that this is possible if more and more people find out about it. It's an educational process, as it's always been with a lot of things. Strictly educational mm -hmm. process. That makes sense. Okay. Is there any All, right. Is that all right. Go ahead. And the mic, and we'll get him a point of a question. Now, when you look at the power in this state, it's actually when it comes to kilowatt power, it's wind is what you're getting the majority. Of. Now, solar is very small here. We are really more of a wind state. 
Because of solar space. Okay. Okay. Right, give them the mic back. No, wind is where you need to put your resources. Okay. Go ahead, Andy. This okay. guy says he wants wind power. Well, wind power is uh, the, the turbines are offshore now, uh, and they're getting bigger and bigger and more efficient. So a, a combination of wind and solar is projected to give uh, electricity at about three cents a kilowatt hour, which is cheaper than anything else on the planet. Uh, okay. Log on and start to research it, Starla. The, the question is, it's like a thing called SWAB, that's SWAB, that's solar, wind, and battery. You Google it, and you'll get a bunch of hits. Let the ladies see if they have anything they want to add, please. I think I, I have never thought of how maybe wind <laughs> could work. I've seen wind windmills there and back of the yard, but that's as much information that I know about them. But I'm okay. Um, well, I would say that we need to get more people educated about clean energy, which includes solar energy. And the more people that can subscribe and force and talk to their um, aldermen, their politicians, and, and, and make this happen. Um, because um, we, I, we don't have any more time. I really don't. Yeah, in other words, we're, we're, we're starting to run out of resources on Earth, right? Well, not only that, we're seeing um, the effects, which are the um, climatic uh, catastrophes that are happening from, the, from when I was younger. Right. Now I can see them. All right, go ahead, Andy. The seventh graders uh, in the Chicago area are working with solar projects, and they're being taught, and they go home and tell their parents that. 10,000 times more light falls on us as energy. The energy intake of the planet is 10,000 times more than what the human race uses. Are. We collect one ten thousandth of that with solar panels, and you don't need much of the rest of it to be stored in batteries. A blend of solar, wind, and batteries is, is the wave of the future. And other countries are investing billions in it. Uh, also, Warren Buffett is investing, along with some other the, None of this is in the mainstream news. We wouldn't know this by watching the news. The other thing is Rocky Mountain Institute is the premier energy efficiency resource center on the planet. And they've got a whole bunch of articles talking about the solar and wind revolution and how it's cost effective. They're not, people aren't installing solar panels to save the environment, they're doing it for the money. And it's just saving the environment and going clean is a side of them. But the solar is cost effective now all over the world. It didn't used to be 10 years ago. 20 years ago, solar was like 20 times the cost of it is today. You know, uh, $100 in solar silicon 20 years ago is five bucks. That's the difference. Andy, Andy, what question. You, what do you got, Charlie? What's cost effective in another place may not be cost effective here. Now we have other means of generating electricity, natural gas, that that makes, I believe, natural gas is more cost effective than solar. Well, you're, now, if you go to another part of the world, that's why there there is no natural gas, so solar is cost effective. So to say other parts of the world are other parts of the world. Solar is cost effective virtually everywhere, Charlie, because the panels are so cheap now. It's an old, we've been browbeaten uh, with people in the news saying, oh, we can't have solar here because the sun. Sun doesn't shine in Chicago. We got to build more nukes. I heard that testimony in 1985. Yeah, it doesn't. Then, and it's insane now. So you, you have to get with the 21st century here, Charlie. Yeah. And, and, and don't keep working with five and 10 year old information. Okay. Okay. Update it. All right. Um, I didn't see any sunlight today. Okay. I'd like to get your um, views uh, on what you might think. Uh, with augment solar, because I know it's an effective part, but what other things do you think we should do to uh, help uh, save the planet, so to speak? And, you know, just, I don't know if it's part of the official um, doctrine, but you know, if you guys, uh, what, your, what are your thoughts on uh, other sources of power that can help get us green? Okay. 
Okay, um, I believe that um, there needs to be um, a mandatory uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think there needs to be something mandatory where I, I personally believe plastic um, change and needs to be biodegradable. I, I personally believe that there should be no plastic because it lasts in our environment for the next thousand years. Um, longer than my lifetime um, is going to be. So I, I believe that plastic should be banned for sodas, um, plastic forks, any, um, anything that's consumed, um, it, it should be biodegradable, I think. Bottom line, plastic should be bio biodegradable. The technology is there, and mm -hmm. if it's going to cost more, oh well. But at least we're going to save our own selves mm -hmm. from continuous um, uh, catastrophe, climatic uh, catastrophe. Um, I know it's going to cost more, but that's, that's just something that we're going to have to deal with. Your, your thoughts? Yes, the first thing that comes, that comes to mind is just um, like agriculture. I feel that our community needs to become more conscious consumers and, you know, learn to grow and harvest and hopefully, you know, market our fruits and vegetables. And, you know, also seeing that um, growing can also be something that can contribute to health. I feel that a lot of trauma is stored in communities, especially communities that are black and brown and just been, been oppressed. Oppressed communities have a lot of trauma and we need to make also ways to, to you know, help mental health, physical health, emotional health, all types of health. And I feel that one is by um, tending to mother nature, you know, having more green spaces in the community. And I feel that stuff like wind power, like solar energy um, can really, can really vision, you know, create how, how that may look. I feel like we have yet to discover what that looks like, but I feel we're, we're you know, in, on the right path with educating people on programs like this and yeah. All right. Um, is there any questions now from the peanut gallery in the, in, on the computer still or not? Dan and Lana? Are, yeah. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, we had a guy here, young lady, who talked all about the merits of hydrogen. And you take hydrogen, you even use solar, and you produce hydrogen from water. He was making energy from water, which is pretty cool. And you can take hydrogen then. I think you could eat your house. But I know you can use it to power vehicles for transportation. Even diesel engines on railroads are hydrogen powered. If I'm going to sink my money into something, wouldn't hydrogen be a better investment? Well, or maybe that's too technical. I, uh, Charlie, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to answer that for you, real quick, okay? If you don't mind, uh, just yeah, I don't care. Okay, it is too technical. First off, hydrogen is produced has to be produced by electrolysis, which means you have to have electric power involved in it, which means that the source comes from either solar, elect, uh, or wind, or battery power, or even nuclear. Power, but you need a lot of power to do to pull out the hydrogen from the uh, electricity through electrolysis or some form of uh, separation. You can even pull from natural gas. What's nice is that you can put hydrogen into present gas installations like natural gas, and it would almost behave just the same. And there are two ways of burning hydrogen. One is a this is a gas to a combustible fuel. And the others to a hydrogen fuel cell, which basically would work the same as an electric car, except for the fact that uh, when you put electricity in, hydrogen is produced. And when you put money in, when you put hydrogen into a hydrogen fuel cell, it will also generate electricity more efficiently than the internal combustion engine. 
Also at the same time, hydrogen can be blended with natural gas and it can also be used, but it has to be produced either through electrolysis or I think the other procedure is some form of heat, which would be ideal for like a small modular nuclear plant to use and it would cut down on emissions. Um, there's a book by Jeremy Rifkin uh, that was published in the 1990s that talks about the hydrogen economy. And I think there's a, if I remember, it's Iceland. It's also got a extensive cooking system that they use to uh, um, help power solar and that, that, I'm sorry, that help work their transportation infrastructure. But there are a lot of different ways of doing this stuff. Now, hydrogen is a good fuel. It could also be used for aviation and other things. But the thing is, you have to produce it. And it's a very energy intensive way of producing a usable fuel. And it no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Why is it so intense? I uh, ran into some guys years ago, and they were going to put up this giant solar collecting pyramid and float it in Lake Michigan and produce uh, hydrogen. So I don't know about it being that. That was real simple. It's a simple process. All right, Charlie, we're going to, you know, I try to answer the question as best you can, but we're going to get back to our presenters now. So uh, go ahead. Um, I would like, you since you both of you have uh, pretty much done, who else has questions from the peanut gallery? Anybody else? Dan and Lana, Ernie, Charles, Trinidad, or Michael Kazenjian? All right, anybody from the, all right, go ahead. That's, uh, uh, actually, hydrogen is not cost-effective. It has about a four times higher cost than that. Okay. All right. Um, okay, before we go into our, before we go into our rebuttal period, this is an answer to questions. Is there anything related to you? Tell us real quick before we go. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, is that Jake? Hi. All right. Go ahead, Jake. Ask your question. Yeah, yeah. You're you're a rep Hi. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. You're a representative of Community Solar. Is that correct? Yes, my name. Is, yeah, it would be Illinois Solar for All, and you could participate either as a homeowner by having solar panels installed on your roof or as a renter, either or. Right, right, right. But you're, you are, a, you're, you, what's, what's the name of your company again? Say it again. The program is ISFA, which is Illinois Solar for All. Um, and the website where you could get all the information related to the program is Illinois SF, like Frank, A, dot com. That's just the website. And okay. Okay, okay. What my question is, what is the relationship between Illinois Solar and Commonwealth Edison? Did this come about, did this whole program come about uh, from the Illinois uh, uh, Clean Energy Act or whatever it's called? Yes, yes, it did. Okay, so what's the relationship between your company and Commonwealth Edison? Um. Um, my name is Miriam. Hello. And so comment and it's comment, correct? And the what? common common well Edison, that's comment, correct? Yeah. 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 Just wanted, just wanted to that. The relationship right now currently, so Illinois Solar for All has a food vendor. A food vendor um, right now is trajectory. And trajectory teamed up with Com Ed to provide um, community solar subscribers two years of, so every subscriber pays, uh, they, they have a bill. So a, a subscriber leases a portion of community solar and they receive a bill for leasing that portion and those, the energy that is released gets credited on the bill. And that's usually how community solar subscribers um, get bills. They, they receive two bills, but Tom Ed teamed up with one of the food vendors and they provide um, what is now the give away program and that give away program is through Comet. And if you- The what, the what program? The what program? 
Yeah. A dash Ray R A Y. If you go on. Oh, okay. On the website, you would you would find that program there, but like Rose had mentioned, there's a waiting list for that for that community solar project. Okay. And and what oh. it guarantees you is just two years that you don't pay a subscriber bill. But after those two years, you and you, you continue to be a subscriber to the community solar program, you would get a bill after two years. Um, and that and that's just that promotion. And the other promotion from Solstice is that they're Community solar project isn't going to be energized until fall of 2023. But because you're going to apply and wait, they want to. Their promotion is that they're providing $100, and these are just ways that yeah, that these companies are providing promotions. And I hope I answered your question on how ComEd is involved with Illinois Solar for All. Did I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you? Um, okay. Okay. How can how can we how can we find out more about your program? Yeah, um the web the website is Illinois S like Sam S like Frank A dot com. And then that would describe everything related to the program. <coughs> uh, the number of individuals in the household in order to qualify for getting the solar panels installed. And um, it would also talk about community solar. It would talk about um, the job training program um, also. And um, basically, it, it, that would be the, the website. And if you, if you do know somebody that would be income eligible, um, then they could go to the website also and get information on the vendors, which are the contractors. And all you would do is contact the vendor and the vendor comes out to your home and then they would give you an evaluation and check your roof out and the roof would be analyzed. So as so as to check to see whether you could, you could qualify to get the solar panels installed. So the vendors are the ones, the companies that come out and they would let you know exactly um, an analysis of the roof and when you could get those panels installed. So um, I think it's, it's exciting um, to get solar panels installed on your home. Um, do you have any other questions related to um, the program? Yeah, shouldn't people be using less electricity? I mean, I don't know. I don't, not if they don't want to, I, I mean, you mean so we can't people? use plastic. Why not less electricity? Okay, you're you're suggesting that people should use less electricity. No, I, I don't think that's. I personally don't think that's a good suggestion to uh, tell people to use. I, I think it's just using the correct form of energy that's clean, um, and then that would be able to um, uh, take care of a lot of the issues and problems. But uh, suggesting to use less. Energy, I, I don't I don't know if that would be you need all that lighting in the room you're in. I don't think that would be um, the answer. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm gonna share screen one more time with the Zoom crowd so that you can see the uh, website of everybody and what they're doing with it. The website is called um I L L I N O I S sfa.com it's a uh, fair for uh you know you can take a look at it and as they see you can see it's a fairly comprehensive website they have uh, newsletters and approved projects and income eligibility and everything that they were talking to is is here on their website again that's uh, i'll put a link to it in the chat uh but you, as you can see they've got quite an extensive um well, it's quite a bit of an extensive site that uh, you could use just to find out more about it. And I'm sure they've got an email link and uh, sign up for updates and partners and all this quite a bit. And as you can see, there's either an email address of info at illinoissfa.com. So uh, with that, I'd like to welcome 
you know, just to make sure everybody's there and all that stuff. I'm gonna now uh, try to get this, I gotta stop, stop screen sharing here, but if I can get this done here. So just bear with me for a second, please. While I uh, get this off and go into this. Ah, oh, I know I gotta do it, okay. Sorry about that, guys. I'm still having a little trouble with the Zoom. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, at this point, I'd like to get into uh, what, uh, to our rebuttal program. And uh, I'd like to see it from first off from the peanut gallery in the uh, Zoom meeting who's got a rebuttal. And if not, we'll also take it from the uh, peanut gallery here at Dapper's. So ladies just- uh, What's the peanut gallery? I never heard of this place. Oh, <laughs> why, why not a cashew gallery or an almond gallery? Yeah, what are you like talking about? Some oh. state. Colloquial expression, Charlie, if you know what that means. I never heard of this at the college in 25 years. All right, Dave. <laughs> to do with baseball, Charlie. That's where it comes from. Yeah, but we never used it at the college. I don't know what he's talking about. We're not at the ballpark. We'll go about 10 minutes a piece tonight since we got a, quite a few. And I know Charlie's got the first rebuttal. So, Charlie, you've got about 10 minutes to go ahead and say your piece. All right, 10 minutes each. All right, Charlie, go ahead. All right, first of all, we didn't thank our speakers. Let's have everyone applaud. All thank right. you for your presentation and thank you for your efforts to save the planet from climate change. Um, it's good to see people out there uh, trying to do some good for the planet. I've been doing, trying to do my own little thing for quite a few years. Not terribly successful, but Certainly, uh, we've seen a lot of debate regarding alternative energy sources. Um, some people are still uh, determined to... Oh, he argues with everybody. But some people are still determined to use uh, methods that are out of date and dangerous and don't want to embrace new technology. Uh, by the way, technology, when I said conservation, um, perhaps doesn't apply terribly so in terms of electricity, but it's uh, a, certainly a variable in other forms of energy uses. We do little or nothing regarding conservation of energy in particularly heating and cooling. But electricity seems to be on the increase, increasing demand as we get more and more, if you wish to call them gadgets and appliances to make our lifestyles convenient. And that's gonna be on the increase uh, by any measure. Um, the one thing I wanted to raise was I just thought of it during the week. I was at another program and a gentleman indicated, I see that you had on your advertising, a picture of a solar panels on a church. And the gentleman indicated that he was a dedicated environmentalist and he had donated $95,000 to put solar panels on the church that he attends. Now, I didn't hear a lot on economics regarding what this will cost me. And granted, there are discount features and I don't believe it's free. You just call them up and they put these on your home. Um, what exactly would be the expenditure, my expenditures, should I contact 
ILS say uh, to have solar panels put on my home. Um, I don't think I want to spend $95,000. Now, um, granted, he had done that a few years ago prior to implementation of these various programs, but that seems to be a significant. What is the investment requirement of the homeowner? Um, what is the average? Uh, or what is the government paying for? And what is the individual responsible to assume? Um, that's what I mean. I, I do an informal survey as I ride the elevated lines in Chicago, and I'm somewhat alarmed that I see little or no solar being installed anywhere across the city. I've long maintained that, I've often thought perhaps we have areas with vacant lots. Okay, I'll be out in a second. And okay. um, why, why don't we put solar panel or arrays in these portions of the city for which they're not occupied uh, at the moment. They're just dirt. Um, and um, take advantage of that fact uh, to put uh, pepper the metropolitan area. Now, the other thing is, I, I think planning is important. Um, I'm not too certain if everybody doing their own thing is the right approach. Um, I would think perhaps a collective solar operation would be preferable. However, that doesn't seem to be in the technology. And we have a central source for energy now. And in the ancient, in the old days, we didn't. Everyone had to heat their home by themselves. But then we converted our society to a centralized sources of energy. And now we're reverting back to the other fashion. I don't know. I, um, but that's what I mean. Why, the, why wouldn't the energy company put up large solar installations uh, is the question, general question I have, and then charge us accordingly. Uh, going on? But I guess if the means is available to do it by yourself, you can bypass that. So why not take advantage of it? Anyhow, it looks like a good program. I may give them a call and see about getting some solar power here so I could charge uh, my computer and attend the college complexes and other programs. Thank you very much. Come back and give us a report on the progress you made of converting the Chicago metropolitan area all to solar energy. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, next to Mark. Who's next? Uh, I'm gonna go next. I need the mic, if you don't mind. And we'll get the camera swung my way. Okay, guys, we're going to try to um, bear with me for a minute, please, while I get myself into the uh, picture here. You see, I, I have a feeling that uh, one thing, you know, solar is a good thing to have. And I do believe it's going to be an all of the above energy uh, thing to, to get us to uh, solar power. Bear with me while we adjust just a little bit here. It's going to be an all of the above strategy to get energy. But I honestly think that solar and wind are going to, even though they're going to be an integral part of it, it's simply not going to produce enough power to really get us off of fossil fuels. I'm going to put up a quick website here when I share screen about something called, uh, once I share my screen, uh, it's going to be, um, we got the Illinois homepage for power here, but I'm going to show you something called the uh, 
roadmap to nowhere. Just hold on. How about some photos of Chernobyl? Well, Charlie, you know, the thing is, is that it's there. We're going to try to get here. The myth of powering the nation with renewable energy. Yeah, Fukushima is still cooking. Charlie, the thing is, is that Fukushima could have been uh, stopped by something called watertight doors in their uh, nuclear program when they had the stuff down below, according to a recent safety engineer who could do something like that. And renewables that actually capture the public nation that can be scaled up to do. And this is uh, this website here. It was, it was going to be published in 22. And it's a companion planet, fear of our nuclear planet.com. But the thing is, Mark Jacobson and Mark Belushi, they tried to, uh, it'll challenge everything you need to know about the roadmap to, to anywhere. And uh, they published their landmark paper in, uh, it was a response, The Myth of Powering a Nation by Mike Connolly and Tim Maloney. Uh, they, uh, have it in there. And the thing is, is that they did a complete presentation on the roadmap to nowhere. If I could find it here real quick, I'll show you exactly what they're talking about. I just need a second here. When a nuclear reactor explodes, how big an area does it contaminate? I know that the light water reactors are not the absolute best way of, of doing it. But from here, you can see this uh, website coming up. There is a link to it by the uh, authors of this website um, saying that the paper is there. And they're on... Um, it was from a recent Thorium Energy Alliance conference of about three years ago that these guys were able to do this stuff. I'm just gonna pause it real quick. Why can't you summarize it for us? Well, basically what- so We to analyze Mark Jacobson's plan. We gave him every possible advantage we could. The best panel in the market, the discounts, and the National Renewable Energy Lab has prophesied discounts. We gave him the discounts. We gave them very optimistic capacity factors. And long story short, we gave them every single advantage we possibly could. We bent over backwards and it just does not freaking work. As you probably know, Mark Jacobson of Stanford has proposed an all renewables national grid for 2050 and it's become quite the rage. Tim and I spent the last year analyzing his 50 state roadmap by comparing and contrasting it with an all nuclear grid of the same capacity. In the next several minutes, we're gonna walk you through some of the highlights of our paper. Tim will kick things off, but before we begin, I'd like to mention two important points. Here's the first one. There are no passengers on spaceship Earth. We are all crew. And here's the second one. Mother nature doesn't give a damn about anyone's favorite technology. She doesn't care if some people think that nuclear power is awesome or if others think it's the work of the devil. And she doesn't care if some people think that global warming is subtle science or whether people think it's an anti-capitalist con game concocted by liberal academics angling for grant money. She doesn't frankly care what anyone thinks, hopes, or believes. All Mother Nature cares about is objective reality, quantified by math, explored by science, and both disciplines guided by a diligent respect for the true nature of things. And on that note, I'm gonna hand it over to Tim and he's gonna walk you through a brief summary of what we found. Well, what the 2050 roadmap plan calls for is an all electric American society powered by a 1,591 gigawatt. That's all our nation's primary energy on the electric grid generated by renewables. By renewables, they mean wind, solar, hydro in its three manifestations and a tiny nod to geothermal. Uh, to do that, they intend to utilize existing renewables and pumped hydro storage and expand our existing large hydro dams with additional turbines for peaking capability and uh, also to open uh, the existing turbines for a greater number of hours per year, thereby raising their capacity factor. 
After they do that, they'll have to install 1,515 gigawatts of new build renewables to bring the total up to 1,591 gigawatts of average power on the grid. To accomplish that with solar, we're talking about land mount solar, that'll take a land area equivalent to Maryland, Rhode Island, and Connecticut, our calculations. The amount of onshore wind will be equivalent to land equal to New York State, Pennsylvania, Vermont, and New Hampshire, our calculations. Uh, the offshore wind area is an area slightly larger than West Virginia, parked out in the Atlantic Ocean and on the Great Lakes. There's no dispute between us and Jacobson on that land area. We're in agreement on that. The bare bones cost of this build out will be $15.2 trillion. There's no dispute between Mike and me and Jacobson on that figure. Mark Jacobson acknowledges it's going to cost $15 trillion. Um, we think we'll need an absolute minimum of four hours of additional pumped hydro. By that, we mean enough maximum discharge capacity from expanded pumped hydro storage to deliver 1,591 gigawatts for a time period of four hours. Not that that would ever be a practical uh, occurrence, but the capability to do that. Enough water in the reservoirs, enough generating capacity that if called upon, in theory, we could make 1591 gigawatts for four hours. If we did that, that would run the cost up by another 1.3 trillion, bringing us up to that uh, 16.5 trillion dollars that we're calling for right there. We doubt that'll be enough. We'll probably need 24 uh, grid hours of storage. And they just claim the phrase grid hours to refer to the amount of. Uh, well, anyway, I think you guys can see that these two guys make a very compelling case as to why the world. To make, we have no idea what they were talking about. Well, Charlie, you don't even know about the presentation, and you are so. Uh, it's a half hour presentation, and I heard a lot of technical gobbledygook. You see, Charlie, you're just dead. You're just very simple. You're dead wrong about uh, what nuclear can do. I'm going to unshare the screen here. And uh, you just, Charlie, you're just going to have to understand that uh, you're, you're simply wrong. You know, you're, you're just uh, dead, dead wrong about. Uh, well, that's not fighting this option. That's not uh, we, we know that, but I gotta, I'm got i having more trouble here trying to unshare the screen. So just give me a second, please, to do this. So solar is going to need an infrastructure. What is he proving? We didn't know that. Oh, I know exactly what he's proving, Charlie. It's just that we didn't know. I didn't know that. What do you think the women are here tonight? The girls are talking about putting in that infrastructure. Well, Charlie, part of it, like I said, it's going to be an all of the above deal. I'm not against solar power. What and I'm you don't have to use any land. If you uh, put it on the roof of my house, I don't need to buy any land. You just heard about them. They're going to need the equivalent of uh, at least two or three of those northeastern states. They don't have to. I don't have to buy one square inch of land to put a solar panel on my roof. The thing is, a lot of time, Charlie. Charlie, you see, the thing is, what you don't understand is the amount of sheer power that we will need as a society. And there's a real case to be made for small modular nuclear reactors, especially of the uh, thorium type. And, you know, I've spoken a lot about this before, and you guys can use this at the uh, Solar Energy Alliance, I mean, at the thoriumenergyalliance.com, I'm sorry, thoriumenergyalliance.org, an organization out of Harvard that basically gives a lot of it. And I think it's a very viable alternative to uh, getting our nation and our planet saved. I mean, it's got the same... Uh, goals is these two girls here we want to save our and home. you don't need any land for solar uh charlie you don't need any land for solar you need the panels None. hello 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 can i say something can yeah. i say something the reason the reason the reason the reason the reason the 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 reason the accident at Fukushima was as dangerous as it was because of the it was a reactor that was built on a fault line. It was the fault line because of the fault line that the whole thing started that the, that the whole explosion started and they couldn't put it once it started they couldn't put it out the 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 um 
the the uh, feed wa- the feed water system for the cooling towers went out as soon as the uh, it, it, it was a fall. It was an earthquake which set off a, a tsunami, is my understanding, and because of that, the the cool the radioactive cooling system shut down, and that's what caused the explosion. And, that and the fire that subsided, that that that, that subsided. So you, all over Japan, there 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 are earthquake fault lines all over Japan, and half of their nuclear. I don't know how many nuclear power plants they have, but half the nuclear power plants are built within close proximity of fault lines. And you can should you, not build it. Is there any place you can build a reactor where there is no a guarantee there will never be a natural disaster yeah. anywhere on Earth? You know, the thing is, there's plenty of places. You can put them in them where existing cool. Where? Even Chicago has tornadoes. The thing is, I just saw a documentary on that. Charlie, nuclear power is still one of the most safest forms of energy around. Can you find a location where there will never be a natural disaster? One pool at a time. All right. I think I've made my point on nuclear power. The other, the other, the other, the other, the other side to it. Challenge to talk about radioactive waste. Challenge radioactive waste. Where are we going to deal with it? Okay, we. Where the the other the other the other side to it, the other side to it is that, um, is that climate climate change can affect, uh, climate change can affect nuclear power plants in, in France. France is heavily dependent on nuclear power, and recently, over the summer, there are two or three uh, nuclear power plants that had to be shut down. Why? Because the water temperature went up so high that they couldn't cool the radioactive waste cooling towers. Go ahead. Okay. Um, are you done? On my, are you done, Jake? Yeah. All right, uh, Andy, you're next. Andy, you're next. Go ahead. You got 10 minutes, Andy. Go ahead and use your time and uh, sit down and uh, go right ahead. I've been studying uh, nuclear power and nuclear weapons issues since 1978, 79. <clears throat> I was pro nuclear uh, in my earlier lifetime. I was as avidly pro nuclear as Tim is now because I hadn't yet read one of the 150 or so books that my brother and I digested on the forensic evidence surrounding nuclear power, nuclear weapons, bearing nuclear waste. There's, uh, in terms of raw economics, people need to realize that no nuclear plant in America or really around the world has ever earned a profit for the utility that owned them by selling kilowatts. Nuclear power is backed up with government welfare all over the world. Nuclear power is the most expensive known way to boil water to run steam turbines to generate electricity. And since solar and wind power have both dropped about 90% in cost in the last decade or so, both of those energy sources are far below the price per kilowatt of any nuclear power plant on the planet. And in 1989, Rocky Mountain Institute put out a program, a consulting program called Competitech. And that program uh, basically stated, and and Avery was testifying at various utility hearings in 1989, that the cost of nuclear power is not so not competitive with cheaper alternatives and least cost energy strategies that it would pay utilities to simply shut down their new plant. Even if the plant were free and they didn't have to pay for it, the daily operating cost of the nuke is more expensive than the cheaper alternatives that are widely available. And that those cheaper alternatives have simply come down in price since 1989 relative to the increasing cost of nukes. And for those of you that haven't been paying attention to what uh, small nuclear plants could do scattered around the country, each of them would be what you call the ultimate Trojan horse. We saw what happened when some people fired a few bullets into a transformer station. Was that North Carolina? Yes. They lost power? Yes. Well, <clears throat> any nuclear power plant or nuclear plant of any kind can be disabled with somebody with a 50 caliber 
high powered rifle a couple hundred yards away. They are simply not, not safe from dedicated, determined terrorists. The, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, the nuclear industry uh, has a program with nuclear scientists. It's called NEST, N-E-S-T, Nuclear Emergency Search Team. Well, NEST has been quietly searching for portable atomic bombs in American cities since November of 1975. The decision was made not to tell the American people about the hunt until the day they don't find one and defuse it before it goes off and levels a chunk of the city. Then they will have to re let the American people in on what other people around the country, around the world know. The nuclear power- Up a little, Andy, can hardly hear you. Nuclear power and nuclear weapons industries are related uh, in the mining, processing, the machinery needed to uh, mill and process uranium. Uh, they go hand in hand. <clears throat> so it's been common knowledge for 25 years that any country that has nuclear power plants operating, even one plant, has automatically have all the capability to become a nuclear weapons program if they want to build nuclear weapons. So the only, only war on nuclear-free world, the only hope for that is to shut down both the nuclear weapons and nuclear power programs. Worldwide. But there's no, you know, a lot of the arguments being made for nuclear are being made by people who have simply ignored a large body of forensic evidence put out by Rocky Mountain Institute and dozens of other places around the world on the raw economics of nuclear power. And also, nuclear power, whatever projections they made about the cost of the plants. It's always been cost overruns and delays. And by the time, if we went to the new thorium plants, by the time enough of those plants got, got online to make a difference, we'll be well past 2030 and headed toward the extinction of a lot of species on the planet because of global warming. Rocky Mountain Institute has a graph uh, showing what it's going to take to get off of fossil fuels, 50% off by 2030, and really fossil fuel free by 2050. Andy, do you have a website where that's at? For perhaps rmi.org, Rocky Mountain Institute.org. Log on to that. On the front page, you can scroll up the grid, show people their, their graph. It comes right up. Comes right up on the start of that, that website. I'm pulling it, pulling it up now, Andy. Okay. So, so once it gets once it once I get the and uh, one of the questions, I forget who asked it, one of the questions asked of our speakers tonight was, well, shouldn't people be using less electricity? Well, the, the constant, where there's a constant drive toward things that become more efficient and uh, the least cost energy strategy means doing the cheapest things first. If you change all the light bulbs in your house and you put out new LEDs in, you cut the lighting bill by about 85%. New refrigerators use a quarter of electricity of a 20-year-old box. People don't know these things. They're still running old appliances. New houses are being built in the western suburbs and all through Canada, Germany. New homes have no furnace at all. They eat for 10 bucks a month because they spent the money on the walls and windows when their place was built. And so you can have a house that runs on about 10% of the energy needed to heat it and about 10 to 20% of what we used to take for granted is the energy to run your uh, TV, stove, refrigerator, uh, new electromagnetic cooktops are called new wave uh, induction cooktops. Use half the energy of an old uh, electric stove and they're faster and much more accurate. <clears throat> so. As I said, uh, 75 cities, 76, I think, are already in the process. Some of them have already changed their building codes to go all electric for new construction. They're outlawing gas pipes and gas appliances because gas is going to be, gas is more expensive than solar electricity today in most cities, and gas pollutes. It's a polluting fossil fuel. So the, the road to a fossil fuel-free future. Did you find it yet, Steve? It was just up there. 
I had it you on. You had that graph up there? I was showing to, people that we can get off 50% of fossil fuel I, by 2030. I had the site up, but I wasn't able to find it real quick. There's the RMI. It's on the front page. Okay, it's, back. Up. it's above that. It's above that. It's above that. Right up mm -hmm. higher. Right about. Uh, right there. Okay, I'll, it, I'll share it says, that. We identify interventions and work towards scale transforming transformative Let change in the global energy system to cut greenhouse gases in half by 2030. That's Rocky Mountain Institute. Everybody that's involved in any kind of energy efficiency or alternative energy programs should be vaguely, not vaguely, they should be infinitely familiar with what's on Rocky Mountain Institute, rmi.org. It's, it's, it's like a, the world, world library, like the Library of Congress or something. There, there's no other place on the planet that has more information and quality proven programs that they've instigated all over the world in major cities to help cut electric bills in half and save the environment at the same time. And the, the, their analysis just gets better and better with newer products coming out. Okay. So the average home, the average new home could be run with like 10 square meters of solar cells on the roof and a battery pack. That's all you would need. If you get a high efficiency refrigerator, you spend the money on the walls and windows so you don't need a furnace. The house, uh, the heating equivalent requirement that the house would be a toaster or a hairdryer rather than a furnace. You know, one, one tenth to one twentieth of what a furnace puts out. And the trend is all over the world. If you travel through Europe, you find they don't have central furnaces over there. They heat room by room, zone by zone. The, the new air conditioning systems are called mini splits. They're like a miniature, like a uh, window air conditioner that's been cut in half and the two halves flattened out so that the, the flat coil goes on the wall and Sorry, the outside good. unit is out in the grass and they run on uh, 400 watts, 500 watts. So you can, you can cool one room at a time for pennies an hour. Where a central air conditioner, the average at comments rates now, the average is about 50 cents an hour for running a compressor for a whole house central air, where you can cool one room for maybe two, two cents, three cents an hour with a high efficiency window unit or split system. So the, the, it's a learning process. But anybody that's in, I would encourage anybody that's watching this tonight, if they're looking about trying to do something environmentally conscious to, stave off the sixth extinction that they're writing about with you know, all kinds of animals all over the world, study the policies of Rocky Mountain Institute. They're oriented towards saving the environment through saving energy through what they call uh, market-driven solutions. They're, they're not protesters. They're not uh, like Greenpeace or anybody else stopping ships or anything else. They promote policies where big companies will just want to change and do the cheapest thing first, and by the way, cut down their pollution by 80%. That's what's going on all over the planet. Okay. Give me one more second. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Again, everybody should have this one fraction in the back of their head or the front of their frontal lobe when anybody's talking about solar. 10,000 times more light, 10,000 times more energy than the human race uses falls on the planet every day. Every single day we take in 10,000 times more than what the human race uses. Have you guys heard that fraction before? Yeah, everybody yeah. Should, be, should be in the literature. And it, does, it's, it shows how much solar we actually take in. And, uh, in 1985, the lawyers for ComEd testified that the sun doesn't shine in Chicago. They have to build more news because the sun doesn't shine in Chicago. Well, we get more sunlight than they do in Germany. And Germany is putting up solar panels on every kind of roof they can find all over the place because the panels are cheap and cost effective. When panels were expensive and it cost way more dollars to get a few cents of electricity, it didn't make sense. But what, what cost $2,100 for a solar panel in 1988 is under 100 bucks today. We How come that church was $95,000? Well, that's that's a bogus quote, Charlie. You got to get uh, current quotes, Charlie. Uh, if you ever want any information on this, feel free to call me. You have my number, or I can give it to you. Anybody that's in here listening, <coughs> my cell is eight four seven two eight 
Okay. I didn't know. Please, re please repeat your number. Four seven eight. That's eight four seven eight three one two zero two three five. What were the last four digits again? Zero two three five. Zero two three five. Okay. All right. Zero zero two three five. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Andy's strategy for 11 years out in the western suburbs. Andy, Andy, his name is Lyndon B. Anderson. He goes by Andy. Can you say again? No. Okay. Um, are you done, Andy? Yeah. yeah that, uh, that's about it. Uh, I covered it once again. Start heating, heating the RMI.org and do your own research. You'll be amazed at what's on that site. Thank you. Okay, um, any other, uh, Jake, you want to talk for a little bit? You got your hand up still. Jake, go ahead. All right, Jake, you don't have your hand up anymore. Anybody else uh, want to do a rebuttal tonight? Oh, okay. That's a good question. Okay. Okay, then what we'll do is we'll give our speakers a chance to do the last word. Okay. But she's not with she's not with Commonwealth Edison. No, uh what we'll do is uh, we're gonna let our late our two presenters tonight give the last word, tell us why we should do solar. And uh after that we'll I'll transfer the chat controls over to Charlie and uh we'll probably log out a little early. So uh, I'm gonna let our pre two presenters get the last word in and uh let's thank them again for their Good presentation tonight. Go ahead and uh, just... Thank you for having us. It was a pleasure uh, being here and um, I'm enthusiastic about um, the future. I know we had a rough bump related to COVID where people we're isolated from each other and we're human and that's not a good feeling to be isolated from each other where we couldn't there was a time where we couldn't give each other on our, on, on our cheeks we couldn't even handshake all the time not that I mean recently you know related to COVID and that's that felt very um dry and impersonal and it was just very rough. A lot of people went through depression and maybe they're still feeling those effects of the depression related to having been um, so isolated from each other as humans. So um, I'm glad that you guys are back here to hear each other out and to listen and learn as much as possible because everybody here has a wealth of information um, that they could share. You guys have so much um, knowledge. And, um, but anyway, um, like I had said, um, um, Illinois um, Solar for All, for All, that's the program that's running right now. And it's related to the installation of solar panels as a whole. Yep. No, she's not with Tamil Bowser. And no, to participate in a community solar program. And right now there's um, ComEd and the other company, Celsius. ComEd is uh, operating right now, the community farm and the other um, company, Celsius, is not operating yet, but they're looking for subscribers. So you could uh, subscribe now so that you could have Solar, solar energy as soon as they're up and running. And they're going to be up and running in the fall of 2023. So they're building in the spring of 2023 and they'll be up and running in the fall. So that's um, going to be very, very um, exciting, I think. And uh, that's the only way to go is um, clean alternative energy. 
Otherwise, we're just um, hanging ourselves, which I feel the news is getting tighter. It, um, unfortunately, okay. I'll pass this to Mary. Okay. Hello. I just want to say thank you, everyone, for for just listening and providing this platform. I know that it's very important to talk about issues that are sustainable. And I am very proud to talk about Illinois Solar for All because like I mentioned, my previous work was working for a private solar company. And I just learned that, you know, solar companies are really, are, can be scams. There are scams out there and there is an abuse of consumers. And uh, Illinois Solar Fraud does that by having this approved vendor list. And again, that is a vetted through process that makes sure that solar companies are being ethical in their marketing and that they're providing disclosure forms, information on maintenance and, and guaranteed savings through through this approved vendor list. And, and if there's any time to, to just educate ourselves and our community, the time is now um, with with especially programs like Illinois Solar for All that are that are made possible because of state laws like CJA and CJA. And if you if you would like to learn more, please reach out. Um, I am a grassroots ed educator. My name is Miriam Perez, and I work for Just Harvest. You look up at justharvest.org. You'll find out more about our mission, which is to end hunger and reduce well, well end poverty and reduce hunger. And yes, please reach out if you have any questions. Okay. Hand it off to uh... Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Thank you all for coming. I just to thank our presenters once Hang again on. for the marvelous job they did. And we'll see all of you next week. Hi. All right. Could you, excuse me, could you give us your contact, uh, contact information again? Um. That would, you can find it online. I gave you the website. I can give you my uh, email address. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Just say it out loud. Just, just say it out loud. Jake Jake is on the phone, so get the, get the microphone. Just say it out loud for Jake. Okay, my email address is ROS, like Sam, E, at P-I-L-S, like Sam E N like Nancy P E R R O dot org. That's my email address. So feel free to contact me anytime. Okay. Yes, and my email is there is there, is there is there is there is there a phone number for community solar? That's my email address. So if you have any questions related to the program, I would be happy to answer any questions related to uh, the program, Illinois Solar for All. That was my email address. Okay. Rose at okay. Org. okay. Okay. All right, um, Jake, I think you can take a look at it on the website. So at this point, uh, go ahead, David, and now we'll officially close us out. Like I said, thank you all. Thank our presenters. Thank you all for coming, and we'll see you all next week.